According to the Quran, any sexual intercourse between unmarried men and women is punishable with a hundred lashes. That makes prostitution against Sharia law, and yet they subscribe to it under a different name. Can you elaborate? First and foremost, I would like to point out to our listeners the following facts. One, that in the Arabic language of Muhammad's time, the word nikah meant having sex, the sexual act, whether in the manner of rape or marriage. Two, the word muta' is derived from tamattu, that is, to obtain pleasure from. Hence, the expression nikah al-mut'ah is pleasurable sex, whether legal or illegal. Since the Quran prohibits out of wedlock sex as fornication, punishable by death in many cases, Muhammad solved the problem of his sexually frustrated male followers by legalizing having sex for a predetermined period between a man and a woman of easy virtue in what he euphemistically called temporary marriage. The word mut'a was more commonly used than other terms for temporary marriage during and after the lifetime of Muhammad. Both its proponents and opponents prefer this word and its derivatives. In books on jurisprudence, the terms mut'a and nikah al munqati' discontinued marriage, and al nikah al muwaqqat temporary marriage, istimta' having pleasure, and the related word of tamattu' pleasure are all employed. The scholars, both Sunni and Shia, agree that mut'a was permitted at the beginning of Islam. However, they disagree as to the reasons it was permitted. In the chapter titled Women, Al-Nisa, after listing those women to whom marriage is forbidden, the Quran states as follows, Al-Nisa 4.24 Lawful for you is what is beyond all that, that you may seek using your wealth in wedlock and not in license. So those of them whom you enjoy Give them their appropriate wages. It is no fault in you in mutually agreeing after fulfillment of the wage. Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. All Shia scholars and many Sunni scholars hold that this verse, especially the words, such women as you enjoy, istamta'tum, refers to the permissibility of muta'. The Shia present several other arguments to prove this point. This particular verse was allegedly revealed towards the beginning of Muhammad's stay in Medina. By the revelation of this verse, the temporary marriage became a legal custom in Medina and was looked upon as one kind of marriage and was referred to by the term istamta'a. The same word employed in the Quranic verse, even though the literal meaning of the word is to seek benefit or to take enjoyment. Hence, the meaning of the Quranic verse must be understood in terms of the conventional usage of the time. For, as is well known in the science of Quranic commentary and Islamic jurisprudence, the Quran follows the conventional usage of the people in all edicts and legal prescriptions. If someone wants to understand the word in the Quran in other than the conventional meaning of the time, he must supply a very strong reason for doing so. Moreover, if one looks up the traditions of the chapter of temporary marriage in the authentic Sunni collections such as Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, one can see that Muhammad and his companions used the word istamta'a when referring to this contract, which is exactly the same as that employed therein. Some Sunnis argue that sexual intercourse is forbidden except with one's wife or a slave by reason of the verse Al Mu'minun 23.14 Prosperous are the believers who guard their private parts, save from their wives and what their right hands own. According to Aisha, Muhammad's wife, and others, Mut'a is forbidden and abrogated in the Quran where Allah says, Who guard their private parts. Sahih al Bukhari hadith 7.17, narrated by Jabir bin Abdullah. When I got married, Allah's Apostle said to me, what type of lady have you married? I replied, I have married a matron. He said, why? Don't you have a liking for the virgins and for funding them? Jabber also said, Allah's apostle said, why didn't you marry a young girl so that you might play with her and she with you? Sahih Bukhari 7.50 narrated by Ali bin Abi Talib. I said to Ibn Abbas, during the battle of Khaybar, the prophet forbade nikah al-muta' and the eating of donkey's meat. 
Sahih al-Bukhari 7.51 narrated by Abu Jabara. I heard Ibn Abbas giving a verdict when he was asked about the mut'a with women and he permitted it, nikah al-mut'a. On that, a freed slave of his said to him, that is only when it is very badly needed and women are scarce. On that, Ibn Abbas said, yes. Sahih al-Bukhari 7.52 narrated by Jabir bin Abdullah and Salama bin al-Akwa. While we were in an army, Allah's apostle came to us and said, you have been allowed to do the mut'a marriage, so do it. Salama bin al-Akwa said, Allah's apostle said, if a man and a woman agree to marry temporarily, their marriage should last for three nights. And if they like to continue, they can do so. And if they want to separate, they can do so. I do not know whether that was only for us or for all of the people in general. Abu Abdullah al-Bukhari said, Ali made it clear that the Prophet said, the mut'a marriage has been cancelled, made unlawful. Ladies and gentlemen, believers and unbelievers, contrary to all of the above contortions of logic, as well as the different and contradictory interpretations of a few verses of the Quran and the bending to suit of morality, nikah al-mut'a is actually a legalized and sanctified form of prostitution, since in reality it has the following characteristics. 1. A mutually agreed fee between the woman and the client. 2. A mutually agreed period of time. 3. No witnesses are needed to the agreement. 4. The woman is not a wife and has no legal financial claims on the man, accepting her agreed fee. 5. If she gets pregnant, the man takes the child away from her. 6. She has no rights to inheritance. 7. He can break the agreement before the consented time. I leave it to you all to make your own conclusions that I hope very much that you will use in your comments.